You know, one of the best things of iPhones as a camera is this sweeping panoramic mode that allows you to take stunning panoramic photos. Wouldn't it be nice if there would be an analog camera that could do the same thing? My name is Thomas and I've got such an analog camera. It's the Horizon 202. So let's try out this thing. Let's have a go. So this camera has like a swiveling lens that travels from here to here, covers I think around 160 or 150 degrees field of view. It's a 28 millimeter lens so and it shoots on standard 35 mm film. So that means the what you get in terms of field of view from the top to the bottom is like any other 28 millimeter lens but in this direction you get much more on the picture. Hope that makes sense to you. Focus is fixed, everything from around 1 or 2 meters to infinity will be in focus. And here is your shutter button, even has a cable release uh, threads here. Film counter will do 22 pictures on one roll of 35 millimeter film. This is an all mechanical camera, doesn't have any battery, also no light meter and it's very easy to operate actually. So you've got this thing here, the drum with the lens in it and you've got two sets of shutter speeds, the white ones and these ones uh, and here's a lever to switch between the two ranges and there's also your aperture from 2.8 to 16 so these are easily manipulated. And this is how, you, how it looks when you wind the film. So the lens goes back to that side and it will sort of travel from here to here. It's the same mechanism, basically like the same idea and the same principle like what the iPhone will do in a panoramic shot. Uh, after you shot, these dials are gone. That's, uh, these handles are gone, you know, to adjust everything. So. Now they're there. So whenever you see these, you know, you already want your film. If you shot, they're gone. And I also can show you the long shutter times. And also, what you do with these settings is you adjust how wide the split is. So now it's on eighth of a second. And now let's put it on half. Now you see the whole split is open. Before that, there was a piece covered. That's how they do half, fourth or eighth of a second. And then with this lever, you speed up the thing and you get 60s, uh, 125th and 250th of a second. That's how it works. Pretty neat. Here's the viewfinder. Also panoramic, of course, and it's got two bubble levels. The one is here on the top, if you have the camera on the tripod, but if you look through it, there is a second bubble level visible. That helps you to really keep the camera straight. Otherwise, you get very, very weird tilted lines on your pictures. So alignment is very important here. This bubble level is a cool mechanical feature. Actually, the bubble level is here on the top. And it's the same one you see inside, if you like, do this, it will be dark in the viewfinder because it, it just takes the light from the surroundings to be, so you can see it. It's very cool optical mechanical features of these old cameras that I always like, they just work. 
It's a sort of a plastic body, outer shell at least. I think inside it will have a lot of metal. These cameras are made in Russia, close to Moscow. And I think they're still in production today. At least I see them still on the Lomography website. There you can buy that, uh, the current model for $299. So the film has to go under this big roller, then around here, then it will pass down there, and then you have to somehow get it into one of these slits. Or so they say. Wait. Sus already like this, yeah, you put it in like this, that it was. And sometimes it helps to make a little bit like this. And you take some more of the film. You see, now it comes up here. Click. Okay, that works. Now we go, oh my God. I forgot how much I hated this. We go down here. Now it comes up here. And how do you get it in there? That's the next thing. Ah, okay. I take just one more shot. Get this out of here. Yay, yay, yay. And now make a kink. Okay, you see, that was my plan. Now it's sort of in here, okay? I just do another shot to show you if it works. You see? This is how it works. We did it. And now, two blank exposures. That was easy, we are ready to shoot. So this is an all mechanical camera, doesn't have a battery, doesn't have a light meter, so use a light meter app. Uh. Which tells me anything between F8 and F4, because there is a lot of sun, but also shade. And I'm shooting black and white film. So what you do, you wind the film, then you see these levers. This is 1 25th of a second. And because I'm on black and white, I will go for F4, like this. Uh, the camera does not have um, a focusing mechanism. It's a fixed focus. So I don't need to worry about that. Everything that's about one, two meters away will be in focus. And that's it. We sunlight again, I go on F8 and 1 25th of a second. I'm not sure if I told you before, but I actually have a yellow filter in this lens. Uh, I have to show that to you later as well. So settings are done. And that's it. One thing, by the way, this bubble level, it's really hard to center it but it's worth to pay attention to get really straight lines. But sometimes you feel like you're not composing the photo anymore. You're just staring at the bubble level to get, the, to get everything straight. Let's go a little bit further and I do another picture. And I want to do a vertical one. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to work.
we will have the back of this old car in the front and the cathedral in the rear. And now you will see, because I do it vertically, so the drum orientation is like this, uh, the cathedral will look a little bit bulbous and those lines will be straight. Looking at the results, there are a few small issues. Like, for example, you've got these vertical stripes in some of your shots. You see it especially when there is a nice uh, uniform dark sky background. That is because this mechanism, this rotating thing, doesn't work so smoothly. I assume it's better you use a little bit of a longer shutter speed, like 1 60th of a second, because then the slit that covers the film plane uh, that enables the light to pass through is wider and then maybe such imperfections don't look so bad. And the second thing is I've got weird uh, light leaks on one or two shots, uh, like you can see here. I have no clue what's going on there. Keep in mind this is a Soviet era camera. It's not a Japanese uh, production, right? So there always are some issues. And again, there is not a lot of alternatives. Time for the verdict. Um, there's not that much to say. This is maybe the only camera like this that you can still buy today. Uh, they are also available plenty on the used market. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still in production, but they have been done very recently uh, for many, many years and there are different versions. So Horizon is the way to go if you want to have such a panoramic camera. There is the Noblex and the White Looks. Um, these are the two other models I'm aware of. Uh, but they are much more expensive and they also can have some issues, especially the Noblex. So this is maybe the thing to get. And the lens is good enough. Um, it has a very useful feature set. The only thing I personally don't like so much is the fixed focus, because sometimes I think, yeah, I would like to have some small detail and then a panoramic shot that puts it into context with the background, but everything that's closer than one meter won't look really sharp on the picture, so don't do that. Apart from that, a cool analog camera, and what I especially love is that every photo has the same setting, you know, with your iPhone, you can do it yourself, but sometimes they get a little bit wider, sometimes less wide. Here they all have the same format, uh, the same aspect ratio, so you can make a great presentation with several panoramic shots. And also I love that this automatic 
swing of the lens makes the result much more consistent than an iPhone. So I would recommend it to everyone who is looking into analog wide angle or panoramic photography. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting, maybe even useful. If you did so, then please leave a like, subscribe to my channel. If you haven't done so yet, many thanks for your support. I uh, just passed 4,000 subscribers. Wow. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments regarding this camera or anything else about photography, write a comment in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments. I will happily answer every single one of them. So have a great time, live long and prosper, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.